This is Hector Navarro, co-host of DC Daily, and you're listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, YJ Fandits, D, 5, 6. Hello, team. Today in the Watchtower, we welcome Melissa, the mind behind YJ FanVids, an amazing online source for YJ news and fan creations. Over the years, she's helped helm many of the fan campaigns to bring back Young Justice after the end of season two, as well as being a contributing writer for both the She-Ra fan site, Princesses of Power, and the DC TV news site. In May, she'll have been a part of the Young Justice fandom for a full decade, and I can't wait to talk about all of that with her today. Melissa, I am so excited to welcome you to Whelmed. And I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's great to uh, be on the Whelmed show. <laughs> Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including all three seasons of the show so far, the comics, the video game, and even the DC fandom audio play. If you have not seen, read, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, consider this your warning. And with all of that out of the way, let's dive in. So I touched on a few things in the intro, but could you tell us a little more about who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, yeah. So like you said, I've been uh, in the fandom for 10 years, which is a crazy number. <laughs> um, I'm also, when I'm not doing fandom stuff, I'm also a graphic designer. So it's a uh, it's a nice mix of things, and it keeps me occupied. Yeah, and of course, I also do uh, uh, articles for news sites and all that. Yes, you are in many a fandom, writing many a thing, as it turns out. Yes. <laughs> so, when it comes to Young Justice, when did you first see the show? I know we've we've said multiple times that you've been in the fandom for a decade, uh, but mm -hmm. I'm assuming that that means that you saw the original run on TV. But is there a story behind how you started watching Young Justice? It actually came from the 2010 uh, Comic-Con sizzle reel. Um, I have no idea how I actually wound up finding it, but I found it one day uh, while well, I was on YouTube and it fascinated me because like, I had just gotten into uh, superhero stuff and I, I really enjoyed it. So I was like, cool, I need to find out more about this. And then I think I forgot about it. And then in <laughs> January, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 I say that I'm going to do stuff and then I completely forget about it. <laughs> yeah, and then in January of 2011, I started watching it. I, I, didn't, I didn't get the uh, November 2010 one, Yeah, but I got the, the January 2011. And I was, my mind was blown. And that's, <laughs> that was the beginning. <laughs> and the rest is history. Oh, um, yes. With the, with the Comic-Con 2010 sizzle reel, was that the video that was like Greg and Brandon kind of discussing the concept yeah, for the show? Yeah, other guy. Yeah, where the, where the character art was completely different. Too. Yeah, yes. I do. I remember this video. I, wow, I haven't seen this video in a million years, but I do remember I after getting either, into the show back in season one. I saw I it and it. yeah, the, the concept art that they show in that video is so different from the final designs in a lot of cases. And it's exactly, so cool. exactly. But Hey, whatever works. Yeah. That video it actually, the show. it did. It did. That video actually has some of my favorite concept art for the show, which was those, I don't, these live rent free in my head and I don't know if they live, if this oh, is the yeah, case for anybody else, yeah. but the posters that are like, them in mid superhero stuff but then have like classic teen milestones written on them and i've always yeah, something wished... like no uh no uh no curfew yeah first yeah. date superboys yeah. is like leaving home and it's him punching out of the roof of cadmus and like um yeah. martians was like sweet 16 and it's her fighting a bunch of a bunch of robots or something and i've always <laughs> loved those and i'm like i wish i wish they would release these as merch i would buy them i in wish a heartbeat. that too uh, i wish that too but alas 
Alas, but yes, I was like, wait, is that is that that video? Yes, it is. Yes, um, yes, it is. Very. Uh, so you mentioned that around that time you was when you were first getting into superheroes. So what was your mm-hmm. kind of history with DC and comics in general before you saw Young Justice? So uh, I first started with uh, Justice League and then uh, way back when. And then I also got into like Greg Wiseman's uh, Spider-Man cartoons. I think that's actually maybe how I got to, to the sizzle reel. It must have been like through a connection between Greg Wiseman. Because yeah. I think it was around that time. So yeah, it was just one of those discovered a world of superheroes. But actually with the comics themselves, I can't say I've gotten into them all that much. Exception being the tie-in comics. But other than that, yes. <laughs> I can't say I can't say I've gotten into the DC comics in general because it's so expensive that I'm like, where do I even begin? <laughs> totally. I've tried totally multiple times. You know, when a when a universe has existed for 80 plus years, you know, there's, right? there's a bit there's a bit to get through sometimes. A learning curve. A learning it can curve. feel a little intimidating. I totally understand. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, no, and then and then from from kind of the Greg Weissman world and some superhero stuff. And then you got into Young Justice and we're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was because that kind of like good superhero and, you know, character stuff, which I also really enjoy. Uh, like, it's not all just about punching, but also yeah. having, you know, heart. Yeah, definitely. That is <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely one of my favorite things was about Young Justice that got me into it, yeah. got me into superheroes was it was like, oh, they're their characters they don't they don't just fight things yeah exactly exactly (laughs) yes um so when we were picking a topic for this discussion episode the thing that seemed Mm -hmm. most exciting uh to us about this exciting to you for discussing this was the fandom that developed around young justice and kind of that relationship (laughs) that exists between the show and the community for how long it has Mm -hmm. existed so let's talk about that and let's talk about fandom so you are the person behind YJ FanVids. Uh, mm-hmm. So how did YJ FanVids come about? Uh, <laughs> <how> <laughs> well, actually, it, well, actually, it's a, it's a factor of things. I, I had just finished my uh, second, first year of university, second semester. Uh, some work's not that great. <laughs> and I was kind of looking for an outlet. And uh, at the time, there were the uh, Young Justice Net forums and I started seeing it was back then it was the place to go if you're a Young Justice fan. <laughs> and then I found uh, like I was looking at fan bids and then I'm like, there has to be a better way because obviously, you know, more people that were well known and that had gotten in there a little bit earlier, their videos were recognized and everything. But I was like, there has to be a better way to like put all the fan bits together. And, you know, be able to showcase them in a way that gives everyone a chance to like, hey, look, um, I want to take a look at videos about the team or uh, about Spitfire and things like that. And not just, you know, hope that that YouTube's algorithm works out for you. Hope that you can find those search terms. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Because like you don't search Spitfire at the time, particularly, you're more likely to get, you know, uh, warplane videos than you yep. were about to get the, the ship so yes. it was it was uh it was kind of uh a bit of an idea of like academic not so greatness and like brainstorm idea with myself like huh wouldn't this be a good idea yeah and then everything was chill for the first while you know it was just like this little fandom blog in the corner uh with my youtube channel and playlists and then uh, came the uh, the international episodes of Young Justice, which I'm not sure if you're too familiar with. Remind me, because I feel like I have this vague memory from 10 the, years ago of when this happened. The, but the, remind the me episodes, and anyone at home yes. who might not remember <laughs> what happened. Yeah. Uh, it was when, uh, because obviously, as you all know, Cartoon Network had a, a tendency of changing the schedule at the last minute and not notifying people about it, including uh, other countries. Um, So in Poland, first, they released uh, some of the episodes in Polish and 
a group of us in the fandom were like, we got to find Polish people and we got to translate the episodes. Those kind of wild projects that emerge in fandom. Yeah. And somehow, and, and, and then and then it was the Brazilian Portuguese, which I, I also know the language. So I was able to help out with that one. I do not know Polish. So I was like at the mercy of the people that we had wrangled into helping. There was like a group of like, five of us and then there, there was also someone that was like uh putting them as captions for videos and uploading them it was like a group effort we had these these wild google docs full of like translations and everything and then from then that's where kind of my fandom place kind of cemented and everyone was talking to me i'm like what did i do i just <laughs> wanted to help people translate polish episodes yeah, you start you start wrangling in a fandom, and people like will end up looking to it you was, as like, it, it can you wrangle other things? Exactly, and then it was yeah, it was news and trailers and previews, and it was like, when did this happen? Like, I wouldn't like, I wasn't expecting it. I just wanted to focus on fan videos, and yet here I am. Yeah, no, but that's amazing, and I think it's one of those things about fandom in general and this fandom in specific of the ways that internet fandom can allow for these team ups and amazing things that people can do across exactly. countries exactly. and everything of just trying mm -hmm. for love of a thing we do yeah. incredible yeah. projects mm -hmm. agreed so in our earlier discussions before mm -hmm. uh before recording and you mentioned it on air here that in real life quote unquote outside of the mm -hmm. internet uh yes. you're a professional graphic designer and mm -hmm. i'm curious uh do you think that that kind of work ever influenced or even just comes into play in how you can create and contribute to the fandom in general or do you feel that they're really separate and you keep like work and play more separate in your life no, I think if I if I had to like sit down and think about it, because like I said earlier, like when I first came up with YJ fan bits, I was finishing my first year of university. Yeah. And like I I would say that basically YJ fan bits is what, you know, uh, and Young Justice itself is what cemented my idea of, hey, I want to be a graphic designer. Because at first I was kind of like, I knew I wanted to do something in the arts, but I wasn't too sure. I was like 3D design, this, that, no, I don't know. And then it wound up being a thing. And I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, I definitely do try to use my skills in graphic design to kind of help me along with, with my work at uh, YJ FanFids and vice versa. So yeah, I definitely feel like it, it kind of melts together in a cohesive harmony sort of way. That's, mm -hmm. just, that's really cool to me of someone figuring out kind of like what they want to do in a professional capacity just based on yeah, what you do for different. fun in a fandom exactly exactly wasn't what i was expecting but hey that's how life goes <laughs> it's it's just what happens that's yeah just great. i just i love that idea of like well i edited some stuff about teen superheroes and maybe i want to do this for a living <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so mm -hmm. in all of this much of mm -hmm. much of our discussion and talk about this has been about just this just this fandom and all of the hiatuses and everything we've been through mm -hmm. uh, in loving this show for a decade. Uh, yes. So what do you think it is about this show, about Young Justice in particular, and the fandom that sprung up around it that has made it so long lasting? Because I have been in fandoms that uh, when, <laughs> like, you know, things kind of peter out after a time, uh, just for reasons yeah. uh but that has yeah. never been the case for young justice mm -mm, nope well for me i i definitely think it's it's the passion from the fandom uh you know throughout the hiatuses all the time you know people were creating things we were theorizing ideas i mean when we had the hiatuses during the first season we were like who is the mole who could possibly be the mole <laughs> it was it it there were there were arguments, there were theories, there were there were crazy er, ideas too, um, you know. And then it was like, who's it gonna be? And even when it was like when we were trying to figure out if there was a time skip based on like the art of uh, of the toys that were showing up in uh, 
I remember this. I remember the yeah. conspiracy theory string boards. Yeah, that arose it was, it's, from... it's always been the conspiracy theories. And like, it's it's such a fandom thing too. Yeah. To like have, you know, this, this kind of like theory building and just trying to figure out what could possibly be going on. For our listeners who might not know, because we do have listeners who jumped on yes. Young Justice <laughs> on the on Netflix or on DC Universe or whatever it might be. Can you explain the conspiracy theory chaos that arose because of toy packaging? Can you explain that one? Because I do think it is one of the wild okay. ones. The time skip okay, toy so packaging the, theory. So basically, it was during one of those um, toy conventions. Uh, I don't know if they still even exist. I think they do. It's like they do. collectible, they do. yeah, collectibles. Uh, sort of, you know, what's coming for the new year, all that. And at the time, uh, Young Justice was really big on the toy sales and everything. So they started releasing a new line of toys for season two. And they had um, some art, obvious, of the characters. I think it was, spoiler alert, it was uh, of uh, Tim as Robin, Connor, and Aqualad, Calder. So Calder was in his uh, Manta uniform. Connor was looking the same, except in a, in a sh- slightly longer shirt. Yes. And Tim was Tim, you know, obviously. But we didn't know that. So we just saw Calder looks different. Connor looks the same. What in the world did they do to Robin? And everyone was like, he changed his hair. They, he cut it. Uh, he changed his uniform. Where is that uh, impish boy we fell in love with? The craziest theories. And then we were like, maybe it's a time skip. Maybe that's Jason Todd. And everyone's like, no, but I don't want to see Jason die. And what in the world? And what happened to Calder? I think again, no, it was again there. I, um, no, I don't think so because then everyone would have been freaking out about the short hair. No, she was not. But, the, yeah, but they was, did have like, was, there was a silhouette poster that got released that I remember many a person oh, was yeah, like circling too, everyone and being like, everyone, this is Connor. Yeah. And, the, and who's this? <laughs> and who's, I think this most guy's got of them horns. were completely, because most of them were of the, of the, of the new team. Yes. So, it, it was it was kind of like mostly everyone's theories were wrong. I think the only I think the only people that got close were the people that said because there was the, the you could see the silhouette of the scarab from Jaime, yeah. and people were like, oh, that must be Blue Beetle. So I think that was the closest anyone got. But the rest of them were like wild and out there. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of like, like circling Wonder Girl and being like, this is Artemis, but she cut her hair a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wild things. Wild Just things. chaos. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful fandom chaos. Yes. Um, but <laughs> you were saying, <laughs> you were saying before we went off on this conspiracy theory tangent. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, even even after the show supposedly quote unquote canceled for, you know, two years or so. No, actually it was three years, sorry. And then, you know, even during that time, you know, we were still rallying people to like, let's try to save the show, yada, yada, yada. You know, there are a few people saying, you know, give up, stop trying, you know, whatever. But, you know, we were, we were rallying people. We got, you know, we trended on Twitter. We uh, managed to uh, get things done for charity. So, yeah, it, it, you can safely say that the Young fandom is a really unique one because of its perseverance really i feel like i may have missed this but when what was the charity thing that uh so um when we were trying to save the show we had a number of campaigns because the thing was that what we were trying to do is we were trying to figure out what was the best way to get uh to get the show to come back and at the time, the only two shows that really had been brought back successfully had been uh, Fringe and uh, Chuck. <laughs> uh, Fringe was with uh, Twitter hashtags, so we were all over that. But yes. that could only get us so far. And Chuck had gotten uh, Subway to help them out. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so we were trying to figure out what to do, and we were trying to figure out things that we could do. So in the end, we just kind of settled on going online to different uh, online shops that sold the Young Justice toys, and then we would donate them to charity. So we would hmm. buy them and send them to charity. I think we, I don't know how many 
because we we weren't like really keeping track of it. We just yeah. told people, hey, you know, do this. So um, you know, like just to do a good thing from the fandoms, kind of like show like, hey, you know, we're not just about the show. We want to be able to do good stuff, you know, like heroic stuff, you know, helping kids type of deal. So it was it was meant to be as a more uh just your good faith. There we go. Okay, mm. time to sit there. Oh, that's really that's such a that's such a sweet idea because I remember so much of the the problems with kind of how Young Justice didn't get renewed was wrapped up in toy sales, and part of that was so much of the fandom exactly. was was older people who didn't necessarily want toys as their main merchandise. Mm. So finding a way of being like we'll su- we'll support this thing even if we don't personally want to have exactly. have the, the thing is such a yeah. nice idea of how to the thing how to was do that. that. Yeah, the thing was that we were um, the we were buying them from collectible stores. So technically, uh, Warner Brothers, Mattel, and DC weren't actually getting any of that money. Yeah. But we figured, you know what? They weren't selling them officially. Like they weren't going to be getting. Like yeah. it's not like they had a shop or we could buy those those figures anyway. So we're yeah. like, okay, we might as well do it. And they had already entered can. into secondhand. Yeah, they already entered into the secondary sell phase of things. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's just such a nice thing. I like I like hearing about nice things fandom can do because yeah, you know, yeah, there there are, are... there are some wilder ideas, but yeah, this was one of the uh, one of the kinder ones that we we felt was really was really good that came out. Yeah, speaking of all of this and all of the yes. long the longevity of the fandom, uh, yes. what are some of the ways uh, that fans kept the community alive for so many years despite the hiatuses among all of the fan campaigns and everything else? What were some of the other things that fans did? I know I witnessed some of them uh, mm-hmm. over my years, but like, let's talk about that because I think it's such an interesting bit of history yeah. in this show. I mean, there were a lot of things. It was basically like, um, you know, fandom creations, you know, fan art, fan vids, um, even, you know, like there were still uh, some ideas to trend and to tweet at companies. I know that uh, YJ Wiki had, uh, had some trending tweets ideas that uh, came about dur- during the long hiatus as we all call it um <laughs> the three, you know three, the one dream of hiatus. yeah exactly name another show that has had a hiatus that long um the what if so you know what could happen what happened with wally what about this what about that you know just making and we were we were making fun of ourselves we were like like kind of that joke that i just did you know name another show that has gone three four years getting canceled and brought back again and having so many hiatus i mean the show is a decade old and has three seasons to its name. Yeah. I feel like I remember even when the show first ended after season two, there was this general feeling among the fandom of even though people were sad that it was seemingly over and people were going into Mm -hmm. kind of the, how do we get more of this and how do we show our support for this? There was this joke going around of like, don't worry, the show's not over. It's just entered its natural state of hiatus. We have been here before, yeah. kind of thing. And, and even and even when the show came back, we we're like, "See, we told you." <laughs> I think it was Chris Jones too that 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 said a yeah. uh, he made he made a meme about it too, and we're like, "Yep, yeah, that, that that sounds about right." Just just another hiatus, yeah. really really long, but a hiatus nonetheless. <laughs> just like this one. Yes. So this one, we do have the, the the promise of a fourth season on the horizon. Yes, which is know so. it is coming, which is very nice. Yes, it's it's a nice change of pace. Yes, yes, it's it, it is. But in all of this, we mentioned that there were among the hashtag save YJ and hashtag mm-hmm. buy YJ comics on Comicsology and hashtag. Yes binge yj and etc all of the many hashtags and internet campaigns there mm-hmm. were quite a few other ideas and they oh, they yes. range across the board and i would love to hear about more of them because i again i witnessed several of these but i would like i would like for us to share with our audience the the chaos some of them one one of one of them in particular i feel like some people don't know about and i'm just gonna be like yep that's the fandom but yeah we range from like having serious ideas like i said about the donating charity you know doing just sort of goodwill uh the twitter trends we were also trying to get uh the green lantern the animated series to uh yeah 
also get revived, which unfortunately they did not. Uh, but someday. I feel like that was mostly, I know, I wish. Someday I deep, wish. There's some deep part of my heart that is like, someday they, hey, will, bring, they will bring the space opera back. I hope so. I hope so. It was really, really not deserved yes. uh, that they got canceled the way yes. they did. But yeah, so we were doing, you know, letter writing campaigns and signing petitions. You know, we were told that I think uh, Greg and Brandon said uh, ad nauseum, like, hey, you know, try. Uh, you can you can sign all the petitions you want, but most likely they won't actually work out because, you know, the powers that be need to see they need to see something more concrete than, you know, signatures on a website, yeah. uh, which I completely understand. You know, they at the end of the day, it's business decisions. But that also led to a lot of joke ideas to come through. And uh, that included, so in uh, season two, as some of you might know, there's a line said in one episode uh, by uh, Crispin Freeman. And he goes, now that's a rutabaga, <laughs> which we all know and love. So I got an anonymous ask on Tumblr one day saying, you know what? I got it. Why don't we send a bunch of rutabagas over to Warner Brothers? Yeah. <laughs> People were actually contemplating and wanting to send rutabagas over to Warner Bros. I'm like, look, I'm not going to get in trouble with the FDA because a bunch of you guys <laughs> want to send rutabagas over to the Warner Brothers offices. I, I, uh, we can do letter writing campaigns. We can do a, a, like a what Young just is me video. We can and petitions, but please, rutabagas <laughs> will not work. I do remember the rutabagas idea. I do remember seeing that go around because people were drawing on like there were so many like lists out there on the internet of like wild things fans did to bring back shows. And some of them exactly. included that like hyper specific letter writing campaigns that all included a specific prop or something. And yeah, I think, I think that was also part of uh, the Chuck one that they, I don't remember what they sent, but it was something like that. It seems like a fun idea until someone tries to do it. And I feel like I'm glad the fandom never legitimately did it because I feel like it would have if just someone, made if Warner Brothers it, mad. I am not aware of it. I have nothing to do with it. I did it, not send any rutabagas. If Warner Brothers got any rutabagas and somehow they hear this, I do not have anything to do with it. I was the, not for the idea. I'm I feel like if it, had, if it had been done in mass, uh, oh. Warner Brothers would have been would have been a bit perturbed. Uh, so I'm always <laughs> a little glad that it never happened and it stuck to just hey, yeah, we being a general a Tumblr season. Joke. We might have not gotten a third season. We had sent Ruta Vegas, but yeah, around, that's that's a Ruta Vegas story. Yes, I feel like around that time there was also, if I'm remembering correctly, because uh, the Young Justice fandom and the Green Lantern, the animated series fandom, were kind of working together and trying to mm -hmm. collectively support each other's desire for another season of both shows. Yep. There was someone made a template online that you could print out of the flower that Razor and Aya yeah, had in yeah. Green Lantern. And there was an idea of like, if everybody makes these and sends these kind of thing around the mm -hmm. same, slightly less uh, chaotic than the rutabagas. Cause it's like, it's paper. <laughs> it's not, yeah. a, it's not a vegetable. Yeah. There are a bunch of those ideas. And also like um, we had these uh, send blank uh, fake, obviously blank checks to Warner brothers. <laughs> um, like we want a new season you know how much do you want for it oh, um chaotic and um yeah we also had um because we we had combined the blue lantern of hope with uh, the symbiose um word if you will uh of togetherness and we were just kind of like combining that and uh, i had even made like a little at the time it was very common on tumblr to have these uh, little pixel banners uh yeah yeah. Um, so I had made one of those for tumblers at the time. And, you know, we, we were just we were just going with whatever idea. I mean, if someone came up with an idea and it seemed viable, we we're like, OK, sure. Why not? We weren't discounting anything. We thought we thought, like, you know, if, if it works, why not? Yeah. You know, we wanted to show back. And even even some of those ideas that never got off the ground and never happened, I feel like led mm -hmm. to such creative interesting things in the fandom because like the yeah. the razor and eye of flower like even if you don't send that that's still an amazing thing that somebody put together and was like here's a really cool exactly. thing you can build on your own or like yeah someone i remember some people made 
fake mock-ups of the reach label because someone realized that like vitamin yeah. water bottles or something were like the perfect size for yeah, yeah. reach and so that was just just that level of creativity that people were putting in to a thing that wasn't just like here's a piece of paper that says save young justice print it out and send it but like making these amazing yeah, really yeah. well put was... together creations that were on their own just really cool things to have made mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it, it was a big fandom like it you know, despite the, the subject and despite the fact that, you know, there were still some people, like I said, they were naysayers. Obviously, they're going to be naysayers. Um, I felt like the fandom was really coming together and having a lot of fun despite everything. But yeah, like, you know, I, I would like for the show to have many more seasons and then some <laughs> comics too. Uh, yes. But, you know, it, it's, it's good to have that sort of collaborative thing happening. Yeah. And I think that was one of the things with the Young Justice fandom over the 10 years that this show has existed and the many years in which there was nothing new and official. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is often yeah. for a lot of fandoms when there is not new something every week or every month to watch or to read or whatever it is. Fandoms often kind of peter out because people lose inspiration yeah. or whatever it is. But and with Young Justice. But yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> but with Young Justice, I felt like there was always this kind of this word of mouth energy to the show of mm -hmm. people recommending it to other people. And the fact that like there were only two seasons and every episode was only a half an hour. It was easy to get new people into it that I feel like yeah. there was always someone new in the Young Justice fandom or someone revisiting the show and getting re-inspired. And that mm -hmm. amazing. I don't know what energy it was that Young Justice had, but I feel like there was always someone who would make something like I would see posts on online on Tumblr or wherever where it's like I haven't thought about Young Justice in years but I rewatched it and here's a bunch of art that I did this weekend <laughs> kind of thing that I feel like happened yeah. regularly to people or introducing new yeah, artists I, who are like I feel it still happens because even yeah. you know every now and then I go into the Young Justice tag on Tumblr and it's like there's still people like oh my god I just found out about the show what is it this is amazing oh my god when when can I get more <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so it's it's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I just I think that's just so amazing with this fandom in particular. And I'm it happens in other fandoms, I'm sure. But I have seen so many fandoms that kind of just kind of fade, fade into the distance and have have their walk off into the sunset. And that is totally fair. Yeah. But it is always nice seeing something that is still inspiring people so many years after it first premiered and after so many times of us thinking it was going to be the end and it not be yeah, it. yeah and i feel so like that that's a really speaks to greg, greg and brandon's uh mastery as as showrunners too yeah just there was always there was always something new to discover in this show mm -hmm. every time people rewatched it and we've we've had that with with whelmed of me and rich have watched these episodes <laughs> so many times and we would still oh, have yes. moments where we'd be like so it's the seventh time i've watched this episode over how many years <laughs> and i've only just realized xyz <laughs> yep that, that that's a fact <laughs> yeah uh and it's so amazing so speaking of the 10 years that this show has existed how do you think that that fandom experience has kind of changed over the years from the very first two seasons on Cartoon Network mm -hmm. seemingly so long ago now to the years-long hiatus uh, to the era of DC Universe in season three to the current switch to HBO Max and every <laughs> the long-storied history of the Young Justice fandom F from your oh, perspective yes. as a fandom organizer in a lot of ways how do you feel it's changed? I feel like the, it's grown up with us I mean like at the beginning it was kind of like you know just you know the, the show was young it was kind of like all over and then it kind of um grew to the point where it is now you know as it is as a full-fledged thing and it, it's really impressive to see how it sort of became this oh, i would say almost cultural phenomenon i mean you, you can't see much you can't say the same about so so many other uh <laughs> so many other shows you know yeah. so yeah, i feel i feel like i feel like it's something that even even when there is nothing 
uh, you know, you still see people within the fandom, you know, talking about something or sharing art or perseverance. And it feels kind of like you're kind of growing up alongside it, that deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Both the show and the fandom and the way everyone interacted with changed so much over the course of even just like season one to season two, so much changed. And by the time we got around to season three uh, on DC Universe, <laughs> It was, it was, you know, it was what it was. It was much more adult and it was kind of aware of the fact that fans and viewers had kind of grown up with this show that there had been 10 years between these seasons. And yeah, even just like from my perspective of the switches over time from like where the fandom was on the internet, if that makes any sense. Like you were talking about like early Young Justice days of having like forums and stuff. And now that's a lot less of a thing 10 years later on the internet. But this fandom, wherever fandom is, this fandom seems to kind of shift and find a place to exist, even as platforms become less, not relevant, so to speak, but like less the big place to be this fandom mm. still finds a place in whatever whatever platform and online medium people yeah. are using now if that makes yeah, sense yeah i mean i feel like i feel like it's it's got a good base in like still tumblr um i know that a lot of it has moved to to twitter uh we've also got like discord servers going yeah. um you know i'm not sure if there's so much on youtube but um <laughs> instagram for sure and i'm, I'm sure there is on tiktok I, I haven't actually checked it out but i'm sure there is too on tiktok um so you know it's 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 something it's something that's that's good to see it's good to see the, the yeah. show expand and evolve like that yeah and i think it is so amazing that even these many years later there are so many fandom jokes that arose from stuff that are that people still remember mm -hmm. and people still use and reference of just bringing up just yeah well like the all of the things that thing. happened the rutabaga thing yeah i mean it became it became like the rutabaga project in season three you know <laughs> who would have thunk um yeah it's you just, know it's those it's those it's the tiny things yeah it's the tiny things and it's just really cool even so many years later that people still know and still talk about them like i remember that first the when the first big hiatus happened and there was some stuff that got leaked from the what would have been the first episode after the hiatus and how mm -hmm. so many things from that just became memes on their own and continued yep. to be years later yep. after we had seen everything from that episode people would still shout about roy wearing a suit uh, which yes. makes no sense to someone out of context who did not who watched the show on netflix or dc universe but it's just those weird little things from this this fandom and this fandom history that is so interesting to me that this mm -hmm. that this mm -hmm. show and this fandom have existed for so long that there is a fandom history for it. For sure, for sure. So with all of that, thank you so much for spending some time with us here in the Watchtower, Melissa. Where can people find you here on Earth Prime? <laughs> Well, you're very welcome. I'm always happy to talk about the fandom. <laughs> it's something that I unfortunately have a lot of experience with, or sorry, fortunately have a lot of experience with. Uh, so yeah, you can just find me anywhere, YJ Fanbids on Tumblr, on Twitter. Um, I'm also, like you said, I'm writing for the Princesses of Power. Uh, you can find them on Twitter at spopsite. And then I'm also working with DCTV.news. Um, for uh, other DC TV shows. Awesome. Thank you to everyone for spending some time with us. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the yjfiles.tumblr.com, and our website, crashingthemode.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And if somehow that is not enough for you, you can email us at whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to support our show, please consider sharing it with a friend and joining our chats on social media. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review and or rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings, comments, and subscriptions help others find the show. And if you do let us if you do leave us a rating, please let us know at our email address or on social media, especially if you live outside the US, since we have to look a little harder to find those ones. So it's always helpful just to have a heads up about it. 
If you are able to support us monetarily and want to, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even $1 a month can help us do in-person interviews when those again become a thing that exists in the world, <laughs> actual play podcasts, fan meetups, discussion sessions, and a whole lot more, all while getting some very nice rewards for yourself. And as always, stay well, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well